so we already discussed uh, in just this class so there is no need to again go back right so we uh, we discussed about the three types of relationship one is the composition the other one is association and then the dependence uh, so the depending on how the instance is created within the other class you make this difference so uh, that's what differentiates one with the other and the other differentiating point is the life uh, span right so that's the and in this class we'll be going over the interface system so so i'll just so in the next couple of slides we'll be discussing the motivation for uh, uh, interface why we need an interface and what are the advantages that we have and so on. okay the first one is just the general uh, procedure on how to declare and define a method right so in this case um so can you uh, tell me what is the declaration here and what is the definition maybe it's already there so are there any volunteers do you want to make a guess as to what is the declaration here and what is the definition with respect to the make sounds method no okay um so in the in your declaration of a method you have uh, the method name and the arguments that the method takes the return type is void here so void meaning it doesn't return it, it doesn't return anything and then the visibility modifier so all these make the uh, declaration right so that's what you call it as a, decl a declaring a method so now there is the definition the so definition of a method would involve the actual work that the method needs to do so all the things within these uh, curly braces that forms the definition of the method so in this case there are three method calls and those three method calls make up the definition of the method right method makes sounds so the first line is the declaration then whatever is the content of the curly braces within the method that's the definition so now let's uh, create one application so in this application you have um two people sofia and dan and they are racing from point a to point b so let's say they are racing from their home to city center so these are two different points and whoever reaches the city center first which is point b they win so the only catch here is that uh, we don't specify what is the method of transportation so for example sophie sophia can use a car dan can use a scooter or dan can use a cycle right any anything is possible or the method of transportation is not specified but the task is to just reach the destination b in as quick time as possible and win the race right so now um when you design the program since the method of transportation is not fixed you can assign the transportation mechanism to each racer so here there are two racers one is sofia and the other one is stan and you can also uh, specify when to start the race so whenever you call for example the start race method that's when the race can start so in real world you can just assume that uh, it's the race starts at a particular on a particular date and time so uh, just to start off with we make two assumptions uh, we assume that uh, there are only two transportation mechanisms one is by car and the other one is by bike right so now we have the entire uh, application here so you have two racers one is sofia the other one is stan uh, they have a, a starting point and an ending point they have there is a mode of transportation associated with it and there is a start point so the start point can be the date and time the time stamp basically right and there are only two modes which is car and bike so based on that we can create this um, uh, diagram so so app that's your application so there is a race uh, so here this is the composition symbol right so um, app contains a race 
race contains at least two types of uh, options or racers. So one can be a car racer, the other one can be a bike racer. And the car racer definitely needs to uh, make use of a car. Bike racer will should make use of the bike. So that's the high level view of the application. And now let's see uh, how do we create these classes and then have come up with the methods. Right? So since we have the car and the bike uh, transportation mechanism, let's have two classes. One is the car class, the other one is the bike class. And um, uh, there needs to be a mechanism to move, right? There has to be a, uh, a method that makes the objects move. So here we have two methods. For the car, we have the drive method, which makes the car move. And for bike, we have the pedal method, which makes the bike move. Right? And now uh, let's uh, have this code. So this is at the top, you have the uh, um, I can't move. Okay. So at the top, you have these, uh, the high level view of the application. And now let's, these are the two classes we start off with. One is the car class. Uh, this of course has a car constructor and then the drive method. The bike class has the bike constructor uh, and then the pedal method, right? There can be more methods, but for now we can just focus on these two methods. And now uh, we need to assign this transportation to each racer. So there can be, uh, okay, we can assume that we start with two racers. One is Sophia and the other one is Dan, right? But we need to assign the type of transportation. So for example, we, need, we should say that Sophia is a car racer. So she move, makes use of a car. Uh, and Dan is a bike racer. So he makes use of a bike. So we need to make this assignment. And um, uh, so we can also discuss what are the other capabilities that the racer class can have. And uh, what are, what are the methods that it needs and so on. So we can think about these things as well. But let me uh, yeah, suggest a few methods here. So car racer, obviously it needs to know when to use a car. Right, so uh, uh, there has to be an instance of car as the instance level variable within the car racer. And the same is for the bike racer. So there needs to be an instance level variable called bike. And it needs to make use of the use bike method. Because yeah, I mean, as, as it is pretty clear, bike racer makes use of the bike and car racer makes use of the car. Right? So um, if you go ahead and build based on the discussion that we had, so we have the, within the car racer, we have the instance variable of car. And now here we are making it as a uh, composition, right? So car racer is composed of car because we have the instance level variable and we are instantiating the new car within the constructor. And the same holds for the bike racer. So bike racer is composed of bike and the car racer makes use of the used car and the same thing for bike. So in the used car, you simply drive the car and use bike and pedal it to move these vehicles forward. So the other, so next method that we, that is important is the start race method. So we should also have a race class that keeps track of the entire race. And now race consists of uh, racers. Right? There can be multiple racers. And these racers can be either car racer or bike racer. So that's how you uh, keep segregating the, uh, the responsibilities. Right? So there's a start race method within the race class and you can make use of it. So, um, so whenever the start race method gets called, they use their transportation and get started with the race. So this is what happens, right? You say, you tell Dan to use the car. So car, so Dan is now a car uh, racer and you tell Sophia to use bike. So by Sophia is a bike racer. So 
so race um, means so since there are two racers we have two instance variables here one is dan and the other one is sophia and we already decided beforehand that uh, dan is a car racer and sophia is a bike racer and that's why you have these two uh, types right so again you create a composition here uh, dan and sophia are part of the race so that's why you can create a composition and then you call the start race so in the start race they simply make use of their car and bike so we are going one level up right so we talked about car and bike we talked about the racer car race and bike racer we talked about the race class just in the previous slide and now here we are talking about the app class so app class consists of the race obviously and now um, uh, we create a composition between app and race by creating a new instance of race so once that is done you simply start the race Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, can you go back to the previous slide? Sir, why haven't we assigned any accessor modifier to race? Accessor modifier. So something like get race and set race. You mean? Yes, sir. Oh, because um, so you can definitely have the get part, but set part is fixed, right? You are creating it inside the uh, uh, the constructor of app. So you are creating the instance here of race, but you are doing it within the constructor. So there is no need for a setter, unless you think that um, uh, this app should be able to handle multiple different races. So you have one. So let's say you have race one, race two, race three. At one particular point of time, uh, app handles race one. So after race one gets done, you it will handle race two and so on. In that case, you would need a set race so that you can keep setting the value of this okay sir thank you okay so um, so we have seen this diagram earlier right so let's say uh, you start with the app so app consists of a race so you you initialize the race with a particular uh, race say race 1 and now race consists of uh, two racers here one is dan and the other one is sophia so that's why you have the two uh, so one so dan is a uh, car racer and sophia is a bike racer right. so you make you again initialize those two values and dan and sophia now they need to make use of the car and the bike respectively right. so in the constructor uh, sorry they do initialize it with the bike and car and then they call the use car and use bike method so that's why that's how you model the entire application uh, using these classes so after you do that you can start the race and uh, at some point of time you can also end the race yeah so you have the car and drive uh, but the issue here is uh, can this design be improved so what are the ways in which to improve this design this is this works but it may not be the most optimal design that is possible so uh, when we think about the design part we can we need to keep a few things in mind or think about these things as well so the first thing is uh, do we need these two different racer classes right uh, so if you have multiple different modes of transport let's say you have car bike bus uh, metro so all these are different types of uh, modes of transport and if you want to handle all of them yeah you would need um, and if there are multiple different types of racers racers who are making use of all these mo modes of transport then you would need multiple instances right so so the example we show it here um, So yeah, so here you end up using, let's say there are ten different modes of transport. Then you end up using ten different methods. Okay, so you, so you say use car here, 
then you use bike uh, you can say use metro uh, use bus so all these are different types of uh, transportation which which is not correct right like correct in the sense it's not the best design so let's say there is a new method of uh, mode of transport so you need to go here and change the class so imagine that there is a class among uh, say 1000 other classes so then you will be uh, there will be confusion and they it, it's not clean way of uh, uh, just pulling it down and then making the changes so there needs to be a way to abstract these details so if you look at it uh, use car use bike use bus use metro all these are usages of uh, modes of transportation so we, maybe we can abstract it to one level up and then create that but that is what we'll be looking at in the next slides right so uh, just bear with me for a few slides um so is there Anyway, we already discussed this. So, uh, like I said earlier, if we have ten different modes of transportation, we'll end up using ten different uh, uh, methods here, right? And then you you have to make these different calls. So, for horse, you need to say use horse. For scooter, you need to say use scooter, and so on. but if you look at these different modes there is also a similarity between all of them which we will make use of oh sorry okay so um the first step is to do this abstraction so here you have used car used bike and 10 different things but in stuff all that maybe we can just say use transportation and depending on the object uh, we can just say uh, this use transportation can either be car bike uh, bus or so on right so again we go back to the example of car and bike uh, so one of the first steps in identifying this interface or abstraction is to find the similarities uh so do you notice any high level similarities between these two yeah i mean one of you can unmute and let me okay so uh, yeah, there are no volunteers is it or is it are you typing it on the chat So they Adams. both go forward. Yeah, that's right. They so in in some sense, so they both move, so they can go either forward or backward, right? So so that's why we can say they both move, and they both go from one place to the other, and both are like uh, one of the students said, both are uh, vehicles. Right. So both are vehicles, and the other one student said both run on the land, which is correct. Uh, both of them move. so these are the high level things that are same but there are multiple things that are different right say so for example one is uh, powered by a motor the other one is uh, not powered by a motor and so on so we uh, as a first step we we can come up with these similarities so like you mentioned earlier uh, one of the uh, major similarities is both of them no. Okay, the, sir, can you mute yourself? Okay. Um. So the common thing that is uh, between cars and bikes is that both of them move, but there are also lots of differences, right? Uh, one of them is runs by a motor for example the other bike doesn't run uh, so there are ways to play the radio turn on turn off the headlights and so on and in the case of bikes you can put the stand and then change the gears so now let's focus on the similarity part which is the move 
so there are a couple of more questions uh, that you need to look at so for example how close how similar they are when they move do they move in the same way or do they move in different ways um so the, uh, and what is the mechanism that is used to move so cars drive and bikes pedal so in that sense both can move but they are uh, different with each other right in terms of their movements or the mechanism to move and so on. so if we model this in the uh, real world then we have this car and the bike class car class would have uh, these methods as shown here so it will have a play radio lock door and the drive and the bike class would have a drop kick stand so you put on the stand of the bike you can change the gears and you can pedal right uh, but this one doesn't yet capture the uh, the similarity so you said uh, the similar similar parties move but if you end up using two different classes uh, you cannot say that both are vehicles which move right you have to do it separate so what is a good mechanism now to say that both of these vehicles will move so that's the whole point of this interface right so the functionality that uh, interface provides is that it will group these similar uh, responsibilities or capabilities together and um, it okay like as we see later on it also force the classes to implement these responsibilities so in some sense it it models the access uh, relationship so um, uh, here if we take this example then cars act as a transportation vehicle bike also acts as a transportation vehicle right so that's why it for it tries to model the access relationship so interfaces um, are like the contract so let's say you declare an interface and you have to declare a few methods inside the interface then whenever the um, class implements it so we'll be looking at these examples later on right so whenever the class implements it it is forced to now implement all the methods that are defined uh, or, sorry that are declared within the interface so in that sense it's a contract so let me just go over to the example so we'll uh, come back to this slide later on i think it's uh, we'll just take a look at the example first again we'll uh, skip this yeah so for the first step is to uh, declare an interface so the way you do it is you yeah, which is pretty simple right you you have the public one the interface is the keyword here so you need to say that something is an interface to call it an interface so here transporter transporter is an interface now uh, we have seen in the very first uh, or initial couple of slides right so the difference between uh, defining an constructor and declaring constructor so here you are declaring the constructor and you don't need to define it sorry not the constructor uh, sorry a method so you are declaring a method but you don't have to define it so the definition takes place inside a class and now this class implements this interface sorry transporter right um, so we will see the example here still take this subject so okay um let me show that example and then i'll come back to all the slides that i skip so for example you have the transporter uh, interface and that has only one method called move right now uh that move method is uh, something that was declared earlier and but it has not been implemented yet so in order to implement it the first step is to uh bring in the transporter to the car class and the way to do that is to through this implements keyword so again implements is a keyword 
that can take uh, sorry that that is always followed by uh, the interface name of the interface so here car implements the interface and along with that it should also implement the move method because move is part of the transporter and uh, but uh, yeah sorry so the way to implement is you have these keywords called implements and car then implements the transporter but the only condition here is that uh, all the methods that are declared within the interface should be implemented and by implementation we mean that uh, a body should be provided right so the definition has to be provided here so is that uh, clear uh, sir could you please repeat why we have to write a uh, car implements transporter yeah so if you want to so you already declared transporter as the interface right so now if you want to make use of the interface uh, you would need to use this keyword called implements so car implements transporter so uh, like we discussed earlier transporter is more general than car and drive is more general than used bike and use uh, uh, say pedal like so let like earlier we had uh, pedal and uh, what is the other one uh, drive right yeah for car we had drive and for um, bike we had pedal but now we are using the move abstract sorry we are using the move method that has that is a little more abstract because both the vehicles move but uh, so we created that's why we ended up creating the move method inside the transporter class sorry interface okay so sir do i don't know that no. okay so sir do we have to always define the constructors of the interface as well in the no 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 so you don't do that because interface cannot have a, a instance right there cannot be an instance of the interface there can be instances of the class which are objects but there cannot be instance of the uh, sorry interface so for example you cannot say transporter t equals new transporter right okay sir okay sir ha huh. so that's why there will not be any constructor for uh, interfaces okay so let me go back to some of the examples that i skipped um okay oh, so sorry some of the slides that i skipped so here we have the uh, move method that has been declared within the interface so the way to declare it is Uh, like i said earlier so you have the name of the method the constructors sorry the arguments that it takes the return type and the uh, visibility modifier so you should not write at the code here and you should also not write the empty parentheses right is that uh, clear So, um, so go over this question. So here, identify the lines that are incorrect. So let's say you have uh, you declared um, uh, the interface, and then you are saying that this interface has just one method, which is uh, get color. There is a colorable interface, and it has one method called get color. Uh, now you have a class that implements this colorable right so can uh, yet are there any volunteers do you think um, this program is correct yeah sir uh, line d is incorrect in this one because line you can d. only declare functions in a interface not define them so right right so that's right yes so uh, line b is the error here because uh, you can only declare it and when you declare it you cannot have the uh, body of the method so there cannot be any implementation in the declaration so that's why this line gives an error on the other hand d this one doesn't give an error because you are 
already uh, this is where you expect to define the method right so you have implemented the interface so you said that you are going to stick to this contract of uh, providing the body to the get color method so you take the get color and then you can have uh, return type or any any body right you can have any instruction in the body so that's why this is not an error right is that uh, clear so i don't know if i skip any other slides just me let me just quickly check uh, yeah i think so i skip this one right so now you know how to uh, create an interface and also to make use of it in the class so uh, when when a class implements an interface it has to provide the bodies for all the methods in the interface it's declared in the interface so let's say there is a one method uh, sorry uh, one interface which has three methods declared in it so when the class c also implements interface then it needs to provide the body for all these three methods so uh, these are the two advantages right so uh, it can model the similarities meaning so if you go back to our example move was the similar thing here yeah. between car and bike move is similar so we more we can model the similar things using the object and the consistency part is ensured because now it will force the classes to definitely implement the methods or provide the body for the methods right so let's say um, uh, there is interface 1 uh, i1 and then class c1 so if class c1 is um, inheriting interface then it needs to definitely provide the body for m1 m2 and m3 the three methods that make up the interface so that forces the consistency also right like you cannot skip now uh, any method that should be there in the class so those are the two advantages of uh, having an interface okay so i think uh, so we covered all these slides covered this one as well right so it promises so yeah the the way to implement the interface is through this implements followed by the interface name um so the promise it makes to the compiler is that car will definitely uh, provide the body for all the methods in the transporter class so that's the promise it makes to the compiler yeah so it should uh, okay so can you answer this question do you think this code will compile so assuming that uh, move is the method within the transporter interface no sir because move is not uh, defined in the class car yeah that is right so we are uh, the contract here is so as and when you implement an interface the contract that you are agreeing to is that all the methods that are declared within the interface have to be implemented within this class so here uh, move is part of the transporter interface but you are not implementing it so in that sense you are violating the contract and since you are violating the contract it will result in a uh, compilation error right car does not override method so we'll get to know what override means but uh, move has not in simple terms move has not been defined within the car class and that's why uh, the contract is broken and the compiler complains right and the full error here is uh, this one car is not abstract and does not override uh, a method called move in the transporter So, sir, we will still call it overriding, even though we are not defining it in the interface. We are not. Yeah. So, in the interface, we declare it, and in the class, we implement it. Uh, in the sense, provide the body. 
but yes it's called override okay sir. but we'll yeah, get to know more about what overriding means in the next class sir so in this case what's the difference between an abstract class or an interface both have the same features okay so let us uh, discuss about abstract class when we uh, get there right like um so there are also abstract methods so for yes. example um if one of the methods is abstract then the class can be an abstract right but in interface you need to have everything as uh, abstract in that sense so you you should not be providing any uh, method body for any of the methods in the interface but but we will get to know the differences when we discuss about abstract classes Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. So, so can every class implement its own version of a uh, of an interface function? Yes, that's right. So that's the advantage, right? So, um, let's say there is a car class and then a bike class. So, let's say both of them are now implementing transporter interface. So, car class can implement the move method in the way that it feels is appropriate. This one. and bike class can implement the move method again uh, provide the body in the way that it feels is appropriate for the bike class uh, but and so the uh, interface captures the similarity between car and bike yes uh, sorry to interrupt uh, so uh, can we uh, let's say i assign an id to each transporter so it has to be it has to be a variable of sort uh, in the sense a class variable something like that so can we even access that from a class that is implementing the class like in the sense can car access a variable called transporter id which is stored inside the transporter class is transporter interface you mean yes sir transporter interface my bad aha uh -huh. um no no so generally uh, okay uh, again so it's a um, mechanism to group ids uh, sorry not ID, let's say instance variables right so that's what you mean so uh, in interfaces can also be used to group related um, variables but generally it's used mostly to group related methods together yeah but you can use uh, uh, so you can say for example transporter dot i think that's the um, you can but you should make it public so you can have public uh, in let's say age or color so public in color uh, and then you can say transporter dot color wouldn't that be static so yes yeah so that's again right because um, transporter cannot have an instance right so the only way to uh, access them would be first to make it public and then to make it static okay but thank that you but it is not um the reason to use uh, interface right so interface are more meant for grouping the similar methods together and then providing like you said uh, different functionalities in different classes